Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the MTAR X submachine gun. In my humble opinion, this is the best submachine gun in the game. It's certainly my favorite, and it has some very unusual properties, which is why I'm reviewing it with the assault rifles and not with the submachine guns. I'm going to spoil the rest of the episode for you a little bit in the beginning. It's kind of a hybrid weapon. It fills a lot of roles in some interesting kind of ways. The gameplay that you're going to see is me using this weapon with a variety of optical and undermount and barrel attachments. I'll explain them all near the end. But but let's jump right into the stats of the MTAR X. It'll deal 40 damage per shot in close quarters combat, which is very high. It's not the highest for submachine guns, but that's a high amount of damage comparable to most of the assault rifles. And at long ranges, and this is the important part, it only drops off to 25 damage. What this means is that no matter where you are, it's either a three shot kill or a four shot kill, not counting headshots. So your time to kill is very consistent, and the 25 damage and four shots to kill at range outclasses all of the other submachine guns by quite a lot, actually and it outclasses a handful of the assault rifles. If you're getting headshots, they're going to deal 1.5x bonus damage. What this means is that if you get a headshot, that's basically one less shot to kill, depending on what range you're at. The three-shot kill range, which is the important part of this episode, is 23 meters, and if you put a muzzle break on it, I'm going to add this in future episodes down there in the tiny text, is 26.7 meters if you use muzzle break. This is not the longest three-shot kill range of the submachine guns. The Vector actually has the best uh, three-shot kill range, but it's the second longest longest. It's just barely behind the Vector, but the Vector is a five-shot kill at ranges, whereas this one is a four-shot kill, and again, there are several assault rifles that are five-shot kills at ranges, whereas this one is four. The rate of fire is 810 RPM. This is near to the bottom of the pack of some machine guns. It's kind of there with the Vector and the Vepper. Some of those don't shoot quite as fast as the more uh, spray and hosey ones like the K7, but this is faster than almost all of the assault rifles except for the FAD. The MTAR's recoil is low for submachine guns. It would definitely be higher than that of most of the assault rifles, but in the submachine gun class, it has rather low recoil. And instead of staying around the center, this one actually kicks up and to the left, kind of like the FAMAS in Black Ops 1. It's got a very precise kick, even though it might not be the most accurate kind of kick, and it has normal submachine gun hip fire. There's nothing uh, good or bad about the hip fire. It's just normal compared to all of the other submachine guns. It does have a fast aim down sights time of 200 milliseconds, or zero. 0.2 seconds. This is faster than the other assault rifles of 0.3 seconds, but the exactly in line with all of the other submachine guns. And when you run something like quick draw on this, it's going to be somewhere between 1.2, 1.5 seconds, something kind of like that. The reload time is kind of a detriment to the MTAR. It has a slower than average reload for the submachine guns. Matter of fact, it's slower than some of the assault rifles too. The empty reload after you've burned all of your bullets is a, just barely under four seconds at 3.93 seconds. A reload with some bullets still in the chain. 3.2 and the reload cancel is 1.93 so I highly recommend reload canceling depending on if you're full or empty it's going to save you about a second all the way up to maybe two seconds and again this is slower than average for the submachine guns most of the SMGs reload uh, faster than this and I would say about half of the assault rifles also reload faster than this. One of the other good things the MTAR has going on for it is a very large magazine size, second largest in the submachine gun class. It has 38 rounds per magazine, and if you're running extended mags, that's 57 rounds. And considering that it takes relatively few shots to kill compared to other submachine guns, that means less reloading, which is good for you because, again, the reloading is quite slow. One of the major drawbacks to the MTAR is you're almost always going to need an optical attachment because the iron sights are among the worst in the game. Seriously, they are very bad. The iron sights are... I, I wanted to put up the Sin Against Humanity again, but that wasn't appropriate. That was a little bit silly. The iron sights are... They obstruct your view. They have this kind of ring going around top. It makes you harder to track your targets at range. It kind of focuses you in and keeps you from looking at your peripherals too much. There's numbers on it. I find it very distracting and very difficult to use. So when I use the MTAR, I almost always need to use some sort of optical attachment. So that's the down and dirty of the MTAR stats, and now I'm going to tell you what I think is special about it. The MTAR X is similar to Black Ops 2's Peacekeeper SMG. It's a hybrid assault rifle SMG. It's a little bit more on the SMG side than on the assault rifle side, but it can definitely compete with the assault rifles. And let's not kid ourselves, Call of Duty Ghost is an assault rifle game, whereas maybe Black Ops or MW3 was all about the SMGs. This game is all about the assault rifles, and the MTAR competes with them the best because it's a hybrid weapon. The four-shot 
kill at long ranges outclasses several of the more popular assault rifles, which is a good thing, albeit you will hit that four shot kill range faster than you with the assault rifles, but extreme ranges, it still keeps you competitive. It's good with the three shot kills up close. It fires perhaps not the fastest among SMGs, but it fires faster than most of the assault rifles you'll be fighting at close quarters combat, and it's more mobile. You get a faster aim down sight, better hip fire, better overall run speed, mobility, that sort of thing. So if you liked the Peacekeeper from Black Ops 2, I would wager that this is kind of like that. I, I would actually wager it's a little bit better because this one shoots faster. One of the problems with the Black Ops 2 Peacekeeper is that it was always a four-shot kill and it kind of shot a little bit slow. This one shoots faster and you do have a three-shot kill range. Matter of fact, one of the better three-shot kill ranges for the submachine guns. So it's a strong gun. It's not perfectly in between the two. I'm going to say it's a little bit closer to the SMG side than it is to the assault rifle side, but it's definitely competitive. If you play competitively, this is going to be the submachine gun for you. I do have an ideal class build for this one that I'm going to share with you. I use these perks. I use Quick Draw, Ready Up, Hardline, and Focus. Quick Draw and Ready Up allow me to aim down sights very, very fast with the MTAR. I don't need Steady Aim because its hip fire is good enough. Focus uh, allows me to win gunfights at medium to long ranges, whereas other guns would kind of lose out because some machine guns do have more idle sway than assault rifles, and I don't like my screen bouncing all over the place when I get shot. You're also going to notice that I ran this with Sit Rep. That's because I like destroying those little SATCOMs and uh, ballistic vests and ammo boxes and stuff and working up toward my kill streaks. Uh, that's kind of optional. I like it. Not everybody does. You might want to run a secondary. I kind of sacrificed my secondary for that. And hardline because it's not that hard to get four or five kills with this weapon and work up toward your first dog or your first satcom. So I did find that to be very beneficial. I run this on every MTAR class, but I do vary up my attachments a lot. If I'm going to run what I would call my MLG setup, my tryhard panties, my favorite one, it would be red dot sight and muzzle break. The iron sights are, well, pretty bad, so I try not to use them. So the red dot sight is beautiful, it's simple, it works at all ranges. And the muzzle break gives me extra range on my three shot kill range, which keeps it pretty competitive, and I like that. And if I were going to play MLG today, that's what I would run. There's another variation you can do with grip and rapid fire. You have to deal with iron sights here. Here, but the grip more or less cancels out the negative effects of rapid fire and you're able to shoot very accurately and very quickly if you can work the iron sights really well you'll love this setup it makes it a very very dangerous weapon and even if you can't you can hip fire people and use the iron sights in the right ranges and tear them up pretty good another one that I found to work was the grip and the variable zoom the so the grip kind of reduces the shake on the variable zoom now the variable zoom doesn't add any recoil but at long ranges when you're zoomed in it bobs up and down a little bit more than I would like and you know I, I I know it's a submachine gun, so it's going to do that, but the grip kind of reduces that, and it allows me to really use the MTAR in its hybrid role. I use the uh, lower zoom sight for close quarters combat for the most part, and if somebody's really far away, I can click to swap over to the magnified, magnified zoom and just use that, and it works very, very well. You've also seen me run around with a silencer. It's not bad with a silencer. I don't feel it's the best with the silencer, but if I were going to run silencer, I'd probably run uh, silencer and the red dot sight, kind of like how you see me doing here, and it'll definitely do work for you, and I really think you should give this gun a try. Well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, which was on the burst fire attachment doing more damage, you can click the box on the left, that'll open a new window. And if you'd like to check out the next episode, which is going to be on the Honey Badger Assault Rifle, another one there's a lot of questions about, you can click the box on the right, and that'll also open in a new window. The Ghost Ultimate Utility app is linked down there in the description, along with some of my other sponsored stuff. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.